Hi, my name is Keith Reed, and I'm wanting to share a little bit about my life with you and uh, give you a little bit of insight into how I view my life and my ministry and why I think that I potentially could be a really good fit uh, worshiping and leading worship at your church. Um, if I'm a good candidate, it's probably because I, I feel like I'm prepared. Um, I know music. I know the language of music. Um, I'm continually learning m more about language, the language of music. But um, I'm a good candidate because I have studied people. I have a lot of experience dealing with people, um, both in terms of the, the beautiful flow of the Spirit of God and, and the beautiful memories of, of uh, great experiences in music and also conflict resolution, working through uh, sticky times uh, where um, perceptions and ideas collide a bit. Um, I think that makes me a good candidate um, as I've learned to uh, share my heart and my thoughts uh, with people and and uh, learned so much by uh, ministering and working with other people. Um, my spiritual journey began when I was eight years old. I felt uh, I needed a savior. I was aware of something called sin and asked Jesus to come into my heart. felt like I uh, was old enough and had a good enough experience in church to know that uh, just the way I was was not enough. I needed to take a move and and uh, the Holy Spirit opened up my young heart to him. Um, and like a lot of teenagers and young adults, I struggled with my faith, tried to actualize it. Um, the Lord was very faithful to me, uh, protected me, guided me, and uh, led me through my college years, both my undergraduate and graduate years. I married uh, my wife in my graduate years of school. We have five children. So the idea of my spiritual journey continues to develop as I move from a single person into a, uh, an, a husband and a, a father and now a grandfather. So all of these, uh, these things influence my relationship with the Lord. Um, I know desperately that I, I, I worship the Lord as I can and not as I should. But uh, I'm grateful that the grace of the Lord is very strong in my life every day. Um, I enjoy frisbee. I enjoy sports, outdoor sports. Always been very active. Um, and of course, I enjoy everything that has to do with music. Uh, it's been my hobby. It's been my love. It's been my passion. Singing uh, classical music, singing uh, contemporary music, uh, picking up the guitar, picking up the mandolin, picking up the trombone. Um, uh, instruments of all kinds. I, I enjoy playing them. Um, I enjoy nature. I enjoy a sailboat ride. Um, uh, my greatest sense of accomplishment, I think, though, is is um, music. Musically speaking, is when uh, people that I work with, either as on an individual basis in, in singing lessons, or as chorally as a group that. Uh, I'm able to be a part of somebody's process as, as the world of music and the world of the spirit opens up and they, they sense a, a new dimension of their worship capabilities. This really gives me a, a great sense of accomplishment. My musical experience is varied. I've lived in Europe for 20 years, um, singing professionally, directing choirs, uh, directing praise bands, directing children's choirs. Um, uh, choirs of all sizes, uh, women's choirs, men's choirs, uh, four-part uh, traditional harmony choirs. Um, I've taught singing, I've taught music theory and music history, uh, I've conducted orchestras, uh, conducted operas, conducted uh, chamber works, um, I lead a jazz ensemble, um, I've composed and, and led praise and worship bands, I, I write music and arrange music. 
I have a great deal of experience in uh, the language of music, as I said earlier. Uh, so I, I think that puts me in a very good position to um, offer myself to your fine program and to what the Lord is wanting to do and continue to develop in your worship experience and in mine. The, um, the thing that excites me about worship music is, um, first of all, that it's worship. Uh, music without worship, um, I mean, I enjoy Billy Joel and I enjoy, uh, um, I enjoy lots of music uh, from the 70s and 80s um, and, uh, and, and uh, some of the 90s <laughs> and it kind of diminishes from there. But uh, worship music uh, is because of the music is then a vehicle that moves me in a direction of worship. So um, the, the aspects of worship that are meaningful, if, if, if the music is moving me in a, in a, in a direction of repentance, uh, worship music in terms of uh, honoring who God is or, or, or the um, remembrance of, of, the, of the Eucharist, um, uh, Worship music is an incredible tool in the hands of God in my life, and um, it's a great tool um, in the hands of God in, a, in our corporate worship setting. Uh, worship music is, uh, has different s sides to it. Um, it's a subjective in a w uh, tool in a way, because uh, uh, people that come into a worship setting uh, sometimes are being introduced to worship music that they've never heard or never uh, been able to appreciate. So there's a, there's a learning curve with worship music. Um, worship music must be something that people can identify right away or at least begin to identify themselves into the into the song or into the music. So, um, worship music is a is is complex in its simplicity, and uh, but it, it excites me. It excites me because it's a can opener to our souls. It's a can opener to our our experience that we come into uh, a corporate worship sit setting, and music is a way of of moving our hearts and opening us opening us up before the Lord. Worship, uh, to me, as a as a, a picture of worship, has three sides or three real clear ideas to it. First of all, worship is a, is awe. Um, like if I'm in Yosemite Valley and I walk in there and I see Half Dome and I stand at the bottom of Half Dome and I'm just in awe of nature and in awe of this mountain. Um, I, uh, this is one form of worship that I understand. We come before an almighty God and, and we realize our uh, stature in contrast to who he is. Um, I'm not worthless, but I'm just in awe of how great he is. Then there's the, the kind of worship that would then uh, propel me up the mountain. I, I worship the mountain as I climb it. Um, Jesus uh, has in, encouraged us to come boldly into uh, his presence. And so, so uh, God doesn't just hold us back at arm's distance and say, hold me in awe, uh, worship me as, at a distance. He encourages us to come into his presence. So, so there's this idea of us climbing the mountain and being active and being uh, participatory in our worship. And then there's the, the picture of worship that, that um, I find uh, after Elijah has this incredible experience uh, of uh, the fire coming down from heaven. And then he runs away, uh, fearful for his life. And then the, the, the Lord uh, gives him this picture of, of uh, this firestorm that comes by him in the, the cave that he's hiding and and is God in the firestorm and and then and then there's this incredible wind and and then Elijah is asked is, is is God in the wind and then and then there's this stillness and there's the quietness and th this is this is worship as well where we uh, stop and we're not active and we're not doing and we listen and and it's uh, reflective so these are these are aspects of worship that that uh, I understand and I relate to the mission of the church um, is twofold one is to uh, make disciples and one is to uh, grow the disciples that are made so so sim simplicity to me is very very important in this is that the, the church is to make disciples and to grow the disciples that are that are uh, 
that are there. So um, the, uh, if, if, if we make disciples, but there's no sense of growth and uh, development, then we, we're not really functioning as the church should. And, and if, we, if we're growing, somehow uh, actively teaching, but we're not, uh, disciples are not coming in and we're not uh, uh, missional in our, in our idea, we're not reaching out, then, then we've lost an idea of, of what the church should be. In five or ten years, I'm, I'm, I hope to see myself surrounded by uh, creative worshipers, uh, creating music, writing music, um, producing uh, situations, uh, worship scenarios where, where we can explore even greater our relationship with the Lord, that, that uh, we can uh, cast off uh, uh, things that have, have, have held us into one form or another, that our spirits can be free, um, to to um, communicate the the fresh life of the spirit that we have, um, I'd like to see myself surrounded by people that uh, are taking risks, that um, that are uh, thinking less of their own well-being and their own uh, f- uh, futures, and that we're pouring out our lives for the sake of the gospel. Th- this is where I would like to see myself in five or ten years.